Hi guys, welcome back to Geography World. For this video, we're going to be looking at the equatorial climate. Stay tuned. and request and i will act on them please remember to follow geography world channel on instagram and facebook using the link shown on the screen please remember to like share with your friends and subscribe for person wishing to contact me privately you may email me at geographyworld100 at gmail.com the link will be posted below parts of the world experience different climatic conditions and we know that climate is how the atmosphere behaves over a relatively long period of time so some places experience a rainy climatic condition some experience a sunny climatic condition some experience a colder climatic condition it all depends where they're located in the world now when we talk about the equatorial region let's talk about its location now, all the places located 0 to 10 degrees north and south of the equator are considered to be a part of the equatorial region and they experience the equatorial climate. These include places like the Amazon Basin in South America, the Congo Basin in Africa, Malaysia, Indonesia, and some sections of Northern Australia. Now, this map shows us the places that are in green like here and here these are places that are considered to be a part of the equatorial region or experiences the equatorial climate so all of these places in green are 10 0 to 10 degrees north and south of north or south of the equator now the equatorial region the climatic condition that it experiences one the temperature is high all year round with an average month temperature of 26 degrees to 28 degrees celsius the annual temperature range is very low as the range is only like a three degrees celsius they experience approximately 2,000 millimeters or more of rainfall annually and places usually in the equatorial region, they are usually affected by intertropical convergence zones and convectional rainfall and the humidity level is also very high. The graph shows the rainfall and temperature in Georgetown, Guyana and this it shows that look at the temperature, the red. The line graph part is the temperature. The temperature is above, so 26, and it never, look, it's like in a light, it remains almost constant with a minimal change. Now, if you look at the rainfall, which is the bar graph, you can realize that during the month of May to June, August, that's when most of the equatorial region receive rainfall. That's during the summer period. However, the rainfall is less during February to April as well as September and October. The equatorial region, when you do the math, you're going to realize that you're getting more than 2,000 millimeters of rain per rainfall annually. Now, in the equatorial region, there are many, many types of vegetation. Due to the high temperatures and the high rainfall that influences the equatorial region, they have forests that have a dense vegetation population so the rain the equatorial rain the equatorial region is made it's basically home for many rainforests and the rainforests they are home to more species of plants than any other plant community in the world now shockingly the rainforest it only covers six percent of the earth's surface with 40 percent of the world's oxygen coming from the rainforest 
Now, the rainforest is made up of different layers, and we're going to go through all five layers quickly. So, the first layer at the very top, we have the emergent layer. Now, the emergent layer is made up of crowns of tallest trees in the forest, and these trees, they grow to height of 200 feet or or 61 meters or taller their crowns are exposed to the direct sunlight hence they receive more sunlight than any other plant located in the tropical rainforest and an example is the kapu tree next we have the second layer being the canopy layer and the canopy layer these trees they grow to a height of about 20 to 40 meters in height this part is that the crown of the tree in these layers are tightly packed creating nearly broken cover for the forest for so they are tightly packed and the canopy layer allows very little sunlight to reach the lower layer so because of how tightly packed they are little to no sunlight reaches the other layers now after the canopy layer we have the understory now the understory Plants only grow to a few meters, like 15 meters at maturity. You can find young saplings that will eventually grow to reach a canopy. However, sunlight in the canopy layer is very limited. Now, below the canopy layer, we have the shrub layer. Now, the shrub layer is formed between the understory and the forest floor. It contains small plants such as ferns and small shrubs and only about 1 or 2% of sunlight reaches this layer, thus only a few plants are able to survive. After we have the, um, the understory, we have the forest floor. Now the forest floor is also called the O-horizon and o-horizon in the plant profile the soil profile or the litter layer we also call it the litter layer because this is where we mainly have decomposing plant materials such as leaves barks branches and stem and stems so here all of those materials are basically being decomposed to form the o horizon where we have the richest soil which is where humus is now this is giving you a clearer understanding or a clearer view of the different parts so you have the emergent the canopy the understory the shrub and at the very base you have the forest floor take a second look at it let it register and we are moving now we're going to talk about the adaptation of plants in the equatorial region. The trees of the rainforest have adapted to the high temperatures and the heavy rainfall in the equatorial region in many ways, including but is not limited one. The leaves are often dark green and they are thick to protect them from the intense sunshine. They often have um, pointed tips called drip tips which allow rainwater to drip off quickly. The picture in the background is also an example of the leaves that are found, some of the, one of the type of leaves that is found in the rainforest, so that it it is able to adapt to its environment. The drip, the water drips quickly of the drip tip, as well as the leaves are usually dark green and they are thick, which basically helps to protect them from the intense sunshine. Now, rainforest trees they do not need thick barks to prevent moisture loss, like other um areas therefore their barks are usually thin and smooth they are usually slender and only big enough to accommodate how tall the trees are so in this case in the rainforest you're going to find a lot of thin and smooth barked trees now many trees are tall and have a relatively straight trunk and the branches and leaves are concentrated near the very top of the tree to maximize the amount of sunlight that they receive so because these leaves they the, the trees they want sunlight most of their leaves and branches are found closer to the top of the tree in order to support their great height, many trees have buttress roots, also called plank buttresses, and these extend above the ground and along the trunk on all sides. So the, pic the picture at the background, that is an example of what we call a buttress root. Now in the rainforest, we also have lianas and these are vines which are rooted in the soil and grow up the trunk of trees all the way into the canopy where their leaves can get more sunlight. In the background, that's a picture of lianas. Next, we have epiphytes. 
These grow on trees, their roots are not in the soil, they do not harm the trees, and they do not get their nutrients from the trees. They only use the trees for physical support. So in the background is an example of epiphytes. We also have parasites. Parasites, they grow on other plants and get their nutrients from them, damaging them as they do so. And that's an example of a parasite in the rainforest. Have what we call strangler figs. They start out by growing on a host tree, then they grow long roots down the trunk of the trees and into the soil. These roots grow larger and bigger to surround the trunk of the host tree. Eventually, the host tree will die, leaving the strangler fig in its place, and that is an example of a strangler's fig. Now, in the equatorial region, let's talk about the soil. In the equatorial region, they have what they call latter soil and we know that latter soil is a reddish clay soil influenced by chemical weathering and the overrise and the top layer we have the humus layer on the forest floor stay tuned for my video on soils where we will learn lots more about latter soils for now Ensure you're able to answer these seven questions based on what you would have heard. Once you're able to answer all seven questions, it means that you would have learned so much about the equatorial region slash equatorial climate. Until then, bye. We are at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and please remember to like, share, subscribe, and turn on your post notification bell in order to receive more videos like these. Leave comments below suggesting topics that you would want me to present on. In the comment section below, comment the name of your school and the territory for a shout out in my next video. Until then, bye!